Christoph Kluxen here in Phnom Penh, Cambodia, and it's hot. 41 degrees Celsius, about 105, 106, 106 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm trying to stand in some shade uh, right now. Anyway, the point of this video, this raw, rough video, because I don't have any uh, editing software with me, is about something that was that's connected to uh, some of the things that have been going on lately, and it's and, uh, something that needs to be addressed. And that is, why are the Filipino martial arts run so badly? Why are they on a death spiral to the ground crash? Why is it seemingly a bunch of incompetence in the FMA, the, uh, which is basically the Filipino martial arts FMA, in the Philippines. But the only place that the FMA exists really is outside the Philippines and that's thanks to a work like from people like Dan and Asanto. It's the second, third generation Filipinos, the Panais, who lived outside of the Philippines. And in some cases, like for example, PTK, because Leo lived in the United States for a long time and started a network worldwide. But that's a that's another very good example of what I'm going to be talking about, PTK. So basically, and if the FMA have a lot of problems from the egos, the inability to work as an organization or network, it's a backstabbing, sort of Romanesque, Game of Thrones power play at all times where everybody wants to be the king of their own little dung heel. Uh, as I've been party to lately. They're too interested in uh, titles, giving each other titles or getting a title, and then talking about their idea of what will work instead of finding out what will work. And basically, I, that is one of the things that's very clear. That's a very huge difference because FMA can learn a hell of a lot in the Philippines from Muay Thai and Thailand. Muay Thai in Thailand is a big business, like I've said before, huge business. There are different ways that people train Muay Thai. Some people specialize in clinching, some people specialize in the kicking, punching aspect, and some people like the knees and elbows at all times. But we don't have them fighting over, well, we're really great, but we don't fight. The reason that you don't see this sort of organizational garbage is because they actually do fight. In Muay Thai, you actually fight. People can actually fight. So if you, thought, you think you've got a good style, you can use that style in a fight with someone else. And you can have people you've trained use that style in a fight. So what happens is you've got a bunch of people who end up promoting Muay Thai. They don't end up promoting just one aspect of Muay Thai or one idea about Muay Thai. You don't just have a person promoting the elbow version of Muay Thai <laughs> as the answer. But in uh, FMA, you certainly do because you got people who are doing sticks, screma, arnis, and they don't really fight. And, and I don't consider that wearing a bunch of padding that's armor around your body fighting because there's no defense in that. And they also don't score uh, accurately because anything that would be on the, on the arm or the hand is going to take away the weapon. So you've won when that happens. It should be only. Uh, sort of dog brothers or modified dog brothers because I don't think the dog brothers have the perfect uh, idea for stick fighting. Uh, in fact, we've modified that in the scorpion system a, a huge amount, or we did. We were doing something different 20 years ago uh, on that aspect. But that being said, the dog brother system is far better than what you're finding in the Philippines because people just aren't doing it. They're just talking about fighting, they're not really fighting. In the days of the actual stick fights, are pretty much gone. Rare that it happens. Now with the blade stuff, you have very few people actually using blades and most of those are in the military or people fighting against the military it would be the, uh, I don't know what to call them, separatists, whatever you want to, in, in Mindanao, basically Mindanao, southern Philippines. And I know some of those people using the blades, so, you know, credit to them because they're actually using the blade. So whatever they have to say is not theory. But uh, this is the problem in the FMA, and they don't listen to the people who actually do it. Like the people who are actually fighting the, the military guys, like the Marines, for example, 
uh, and, the, and the scout rangers using the blades, the rest of MMA doesn't listen to them, which is stupidity. These are the guys who are superior to your little practice out in the backyard or in the park. They like to practice in parks a lot. The guys practicing in Lunetta Park don't have one iota on a recon marine who has had to fight hand to hand in southern Mindanao. They, just, they don't have jack shit on them, but they don't listen to them. So we got a problem here that unlike in MMA that reformed mar traditional martial arts ideas, we don't have that happening in FMA. We still got this cloistered, uh, vested interest in, in their view of MA, M FMA. Also, the people who are involved are pretty much incompetent, as I said. They don't know how to brand themselves accurately. They don't know how to make an organization. What they try to do is make a little kingdom, which doesn't work for business. Uh, trying to be the potentate <laughs> doesn't work. And you've got simple things people can cure, like they don't get certificates to people. They don't send them out. When, after completion of something, and they say they're going to give a certificate, they don't do it. A year later, they're still not giving certificates. This is just piss poor. I, customer service is not even the correct word. It's just they're not doing what they should be doing. This is something that's easy to do. It's secretarial. Uh, skills, which, like I'm saying, basically they don't know in FMA how to actually propagate, work together. They don't know how to work together. This is the major problem. Uh, Panoy's Filipinos are much like a, a pail, a bucket full of crabs. They can't help each other get out because when one starts getting out, the others grab them and pull them back down because if you're somebody, that means they're nobody, but it's not that way. The reality, like I, I've dealt with lately, uh, with this guy Ray is that he's the person who held himself back. Me being somebody worldwide, which I am, and you all know that, and what I've accomplished, my list of credentials is on my website, fluentfighting.com, look there, had nothing to do with him because nobody held him back. His own limitations and his own inability to become somebody held himself back. So being envious of that is his own failing. So they got a lot of personal failings. So what I'm saying here is you've got this and that. And then they also want to just be in control. It's, uh, this is what's happened to PTK. There's been so many breaks with Leo on PTK. There's also a, a serious racism going on because a lot of times they do not want non-Filipinos to hold big positions. They've got to be subservient as if the Filipinos are this mysterious fighting force that has done so much. Well actually they they did resist the Japanese, which is a hell of a lot more than what the Thais did. The Thais just let them roll over them. That's another story for another time. But anyway, what I got to say about that is that this mystique they try to get about Lapu Lapu, which is not true historically whatsoever, you know, the reality is the Spanish beat the hell out of the Filipinos and subjugated them for 333 years. And also, if you do the real research, are part of the reason that they have certain blade arts. And the triangle, what they like to say, is kind of a misunderstanding of the circle school of Carranza. Anyway, that's for another time. I've covered all that in, in, in my organization, or in Close and Combat Systems. You can find out more about that. It's very interesting because I am a, a thorough researcher of fighting and what's happened, especially Occidental methods. Anyway, so getting back to why there are problems with FMA, basically they can't work together. They want to tear down other people. They're racist, uh, and they don't show support, and they don't show appreciation. For example, the people that I was uh, backing, I was the first clue for many people in the world, well, I was the only clue for many people in the world, that they existed. Nobody knew about these guys, because I had gone out of my way spent my time, energy, and money to find them and found that they are doing some things that are pretty good. At close range, they're really good. They're really good. I'm not going to, I don't lie about things. They're very good at close range. But I'm the one that got them noticed. I'm the one that said re they need to rebrand themselves. They, had a, they have a stupidly too long of a name that's impossible to find. You can't do it on a Google search. It's uh, too easy to misspell. It, it doesn't clearly state what they're doing either. It's not a mistake. They don't know about business, okay? These are just simple things about business. Anyway, I started to rebrand them and give them advertising, which they didn't appreciate. 
at whatsoever. And so then I was shown no appreciation for that, and then I was thrown under the bus, as they say, because one egomaniac tried to pull together all the Filipinos because I was the only non-Filipino uh, and I wasn't kissing ass. I'm not a sycophant, which is uh, why people like me in the real world. That's why I get along with people like Gene Bell and also John Saylor, among others, and Mike Sandlin. <laughs> These are the people that I care about because they have integrity and a moral fiber, which is missing. There isn't any moral fiber. I got a lot of people that are out just for the money aspect, but they don't know how to establish an organization that will really do business. What they know how to do is just try to gouge you. That's what they're after, just gouging you. The short-term strategy, that's all they have. They don't have a long-term strategy. They can't think that far ahead. Anyway, so you'll notice that there is, if you try to go and learn Filipino martial arts in the Philippines, it's very difficult. You can look, try to find it online. There are only a few places you can find it, and the ones that are run with any sort of efficiency are Westerners there trying to run it. I'm not saying that those are good places to learn. I'm just saying they're the only ones who have an idea of business. They don't look at how to pick you up from the airport. They don't look at the packaging. They don't look at uh, making themselves easy to find. They have not tried to build it up. They haven't talked about any of the benefits of learning it, going there, the costs. Uh, the authenticity of learning it. Because what you have a lot of people saying, I do Filipino martial arts. And where did they learn it? Learn it from the United States or maybe Europe. But in the United States, you got a lot of people, I do Filipino martial arts. Have you ever been to the Philippines? The, the people that, you tr that trained you ever trained in the Philippines? No, that's the same problem with the Muay Thai in the United States. You have inauthentic losers. <laughs> It's like saying, uh, I learned how to do Italian cooking by a guy who worked at Pizza Hut. That's how completely asinine that logic is. Anyway, beyond that specious logic, uh, the false thing again with M FMA is that they don't even look at the paradigm that's working in the, in the region. In Southeast Asia, the paradigm of Muay Thai is working very well. Uh, Burma is just now starting with left way, which is much better than Muay Thai. Uh, Burmese boxing is other name. Bondo is a made-up name, doesn't really exist. But anyway, so the Burmese boxing, they're starting out, and they're going to be ahead of the FMA, which FMA has had 40 years to try to get some thing going, you know, to get their shit together, and they haven't got their shit together. But anyway, so the problem is with FMA, as, a, as an outsider, you're going to, as a non-Filipino, you're going to get charged when they don't charge each other. You're going to be gouged and expect to uh, take care of a lot of things that they, don't have, that they won't expect from each other. They're going to try to use you in any way that they can. Uh, and they're going to try to make themselves seem like something that you need to aspire for but, but can never reach. This is the problem with like PTK. I just use that because it's hugely known that there's so many different factions of PTK. Uh, break-offs and stuff. This original thing happened too from Bluintna Walk a long time ago, so you got all these factions of Bluintna Walk rolling around, and you have factions of factions now. Because once again, they can't work together. So, and the problem with the Filipinos is they cannot critically analyze their faults. All they'll hear is, oh, uh, this, is, this is telling me bad, uh, this is a bad thing. Yeah, sweeping it under the rug, which is a, a strong thing to do in Southeast Asia because it's an anti-truth culture, pervades the entire area. It doesn't cure anything, it doesn't fix anything. All it does is allow some delusional ego to exist, which is what's happened in the organization uh, that I'm not in. I'm not in it because, one, I, I don't play those games. I'm not gonna play sick and games. I'm all about who's got the real skill. I'm all about who's the real fighter. I'm not about titles. And so, if somebody is a better fighter and is not with the huge title, but the huge title guy uh, gets his ass kicked by the guy who's a better fighter, then what happens in it? I think he should be stripped from his title. Now, if you want to say you're a coach only, that's one thing, but trying to walk around like you're the grand master or the grand 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 master and you can't fight compared to other guys, because one, you don't do it, and then you want to say, I do it for peace is bullshit, all right? Don't get in fighting if you're not going to fight. Don't act like you're training people to fight if you've never fought, okay? It's like saying, I'm, I train runners, but I've never run. Uh, yeah, I teach people about sex, but I never had sex. This sort of crap logic, it's not even logic, it's just, it's insanity. <laughs> it 
can't exist. And I have to put it in those ways, this is how Mike Sandlin would do it. Those analogies work well because it's stupid to think that you could learn sex from someone who knows nothing about sex. Same thing, thing you can learn about fighting from someone who's never fought because they don't have the experience, they don't know what the real qualities of a, of a fighter really are. You know, they just get caught up in ideas and some theory. Theory doesn't always play out, all right? Theory doesn't always work. You can see that happening from non-fighters who believe in certain ego things, like the Conor McGregor fight against Diaz. I said Diaz is going to beat his ass. No, Conor McGregor, he's going, to, he's going to win. Nobody can beat him. Same thing I said about uh, Ronda Rousey. Everyone was, oh, Ronda Rousey's unbeatable. She's incredible. She's blah, blah. No, she's not. No, she's not. You know? You, that's because I'm a real fighter. That's a big difference. But so anyway, my point. The biggest point is always learn fighting from someone who's really fought. Now, you don't, if you're learning fighting, it doesn't mean you have to fight, but don't try to teach people if you don't have the ability. It's like saying, I teach someone how to speak Spanish, but I can't speak Spanish. <laughs> That's ridiculous. So FMA has a lot of problems. It needs to take a good, hard look at itself. It needs to look at the paradigm that's working in the Southeast Asia, which is Muay Thai, and it needs to actually compete against other people. They should do that in a Dog Brothers style format. That's the only way you're going to learn what works and what doesn't work. Because I'm telling you, they teach a bunch of garbage in all forms of Kali Arnis and Eskrima that is pointless. It will not work. Real fighters look at that stuff and say, what in the hell are you trying? It looks like it looks like the stupidity from the Karate Kid and the crane stance. Some idiotic moves. Anyway, so that's enough for right now. But uh, it's Christoph Klugston from FluentFighting.com, Combat judo.com, tigerclan.info, and from Phnom Penh, Cambodia, here in Southeast Asia, where it's extremely hot. I'll talk to you soon. Until that time, be cool, be strong, be confident, and uh, maybe I'll see you in training. <laughs>